That's the house with TBC Chesterfield. Thanks for connecting with us. We are a community of faith, family, and fellowship. We're looking forward to connecting with you. Follow us, tbcchesterfield.org. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Again, we are to show God's love. A church that loves with a pastor that loves, and we're looking forward to loving you. Please join us for our I Believe prayer call on each Monday evening at 8 p.m. Dial in 716-427-1423. Access code 689-859-POUND. Thank you for your commitments and support of our ministry through the Giveify mobile app that's available in the Apple and Google Play Store, through our church website, tbcchesterfield.org, and Cash App by searching for money symbol TBC Chesterfield. You can also mail your commitments to our P.O. Box 255, Chesterfield, Virginia, 23832. Happy Sunday, Tabernacle Baptist Church family. The TBC Sunday School staff are excited about studying and sharing the Word of God. Staff is in place for all age groups, from primary to adults. Please come out for Sunday school every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, TVC congregation, please come out and bring your youth so that we may study and grow in the Word of God together. See you there. Please join us as we learn more about avoiding identity theft on Thursday, April the 25th, 2024 from 10 to 11 a.m. at Chesterfield Baptist Church at 16520 Hall Street Road, Mosley, Virginia. Please register in the North X by April the 1st, 2024. Attention all parents. There will be youth choir rehearsal ages 18 years old and under on Saturday, April 6 at 11 a.m. in the church sanctuary. We're excited and look forward to seeing you there. If you have any questions, please contact our church office at 804-739-2169. On behalf of Pastor House and the TBC Church family, happy birthday! To all of you who were born in the month of March. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.
I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Is there anybody that is excited to be in God's house? Amen. All right, that sounds good. If that was last week, amen. But last week was Palm Sunday. Amen. But are there any believers in the house that can that know, that believe, and can celebrate? That because of God's power, because of God's provision, because of God's grace, and because of God's mercy, it can be one way, one day, but God has the ability, the strength, the will, the love, the compassion to turn things around. All right, nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will turn things around. I don't know who I'm talking to on today. Are you ready to worship God? Amen. Because God can turn it around in your life. Amen. Turn it around on your behalf. Turn it around. Amen. Even when you don't deserve it. Turn around all that you are going through. I'm trying to help somebody. Turn around. Amen. What you've been frustrated with. Turn around. Amen. What you've been praying for. Turn around what you've been questioning. 
Is there anybody that can thank God on today that God can turn it around? We give God praise. Amen. For another day's journey, we give God praise for another Sunday morning. Amen. We thank God for family and friends that are connected on today. Amen. Y'all look good. Amen. Amen. Y'all look good. We look good. I hope you feel good. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the spirit of God that's in this place. Let us pray. God, have your way today. We're excited. We're thankful. Amen. We are honored. We are privileged. Amen. We feel your presence. And because of that, God, we give thanks. God, have your way. And everything's said and done. Um, God, have your way. And our thoughts, our actions, have your way in what is presented today. And we pray what is presented is pleasing in your sight. So now, God, we look forward for what is to come. Now, God, we open up ourselves to the move of the power of your Holy Spirit. Now, oh God, we say have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say together, amen. Amen. Can we celebrate Reverend Carolyn P. as she comes and welcomes us on this morning? Resurrection Sunday. And we welcome you that are here this morning. And those of you who are online, we welcome you to our time of worship. And we encourage you to worship and praise with us. And we pray that you be inspired once you've shared with us to not only draw closer to Christ, but share the word with everybody else. We came to glorify him and to give him praise this morning. And we want you to join in with us as we do this, as we celebrate our risen Savior, for he is is risen. Yes. Indeed he is. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is blessing us right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you can say that the Lord is blessing you right now? Hallelujah. On this Resurrection Sunday, we can say that he is blessing us right now. Glory be to God. Feel like running, y'all. I feel like running. Glory be to God. We're going to now ask uh, Sister Kim Studevant to come forward. And she gives us a poem on just one nail. Good morning, Tabernacle. Just One Nail by Deborah Ann. One nail was all it took to crucify Christ that day. All it took was just one nail for the crowd to get their way. One nail was all it, lo all it took for the people to begin to yell, crucify him, crucify him, put the hammer to the nail. One nail was all it took for them to secure his fate. One large iron nail became the spike of their distaste. One nail was all it took as their voices soared, crucify him, crucify him, and so they nailed the Lord. One nail was all it took, though they used all three, but it took just that one nail so all the sinners could go free. All it took was that first nail for the crowd to be satisfied. One nail was all it took for Jesus to be sacrificed. We'll now go into part one of our Easter program, our Easter worship, rather, and we will have our Easter Sunday poems um, led by uh, Sister Connie Lambert and her young people. Jesus died to make us free, free from sin and shame. His blood that was shed on a cross for you and me has opened blind eyes and revealed his plan for eternity. my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that is good, for he tenderly cares for me as a good shepherd should. He keeps me away from danger, protects my every step. He won't let my foot slip, for he guards every misstep. He is skillful and faithful to care for his flock, and if I were to wonder, he'd search around the block. When I call out his name, he comes running out to me, for he recognizes my voice, and for worry, I am free. He tends to my desires and knows what I need, and so I will not hunger. On, for his goodness, I will feed. I shall find sacrification all the days of my life, for in the good shepherd there is neither lack nor strife. Amen. Savior and what he did for me. When I see, I see his sacrifice 
on the cross of Calvary. When I see, when I see the majesty of creation, when I see, I remember how much the love of God is a blessing. By grace alone, by grace alone, not of me in Christ through faith is why I'm free. By grace alone, not of my hand, and so I humbly receive redemption's plan. By grace alone, not of my deed, the word is sufficient for want and need. By grace alone, not of my thought, God in favor cannot be bought. By grace alone, not of my doing, a gift in measure worth my pursuing. By grace alone, not of me, justified on the cross of Calvary. Easter, everyone. of praise. They did an awesome job. Yes, they did. So now we're going to have Dashell come with her mime.
this morning. It's power in the blood. It's healing in the blood. It's salvation 
in the blood. There's power in the blood. Thank God for the blood. As we continue with our resurrection celebration, we're going to now have part three of it, and it's going to be the top ten Easter, led by Sister Angela Pollard and her class. Hear ye them. Good morning, class. Good Happy morning. Sunday. Good morning. Okay. This class is going to be different today. I would like for you to write down your 10 top reasons why Easter is your favorite holiday. I love Easter. Okay, while y'all are doing that, I'm going to play my favorite Easter song.
But really, for the most part, bunnies are soft and cuddly. Okay, so number 10 is bunnies. Okay, Zayla? Mm, no, they aren't that good, but we need to keep moving. Let's see. Chicks. They're maybe even cuter than bunnies, so little and chirpy, and they bring us those yummy chocolate eggs filled with cream. All right, so number nine is chicks. Okay. Tanasia. Shopping, Easter sales on dresses, purses, gloves, hats, shoes. This list could go on and on and on. Okay. Number eight is shopping. Taraji. Good Friday. Some of us even get this day off of school and work. And even if you don't, it just seems like everyone is always in a good mood on Good Friday. Wait, wait. I finally get it. It's because it's a law that you have to be good since it's called Good Friday, right? Okay, number seven is Good Friday. Okay, Connor? How about pastels? Are there any colors in the world more beautiful than pastel? And on Easter, Everybody wears yellow, pink, blue, and green. It's like everybody decides to match all on the same day. I can't believe I'm really adding pastel. Okay, number six is pastel. Ari? I can't believe it's only number five on your list. I feel like we are forgetting something really important. Well, we aren't done yet. Church. Okay, number five is church. Okay, Zayla. Yeah, how people you haven't seen in a while come and everyone gets dressed up and there's always a special skit or a musical performance. That's not exactly what I was thinking, but I guess I see what you're saying. Anything else about church that is awesome on Easter? Okay, number four is musical performance. Taraji? I've got it. Number three, dinner and my family after church. We always go to the best restaurant in town. And then I go over to Grandma's house because her mom cooks a huge meal every Easter dinner. They have mashed potatoes, corn, and lamb. Okay, number three is dinner. Amen. 
Tanasia? Um, candy is probably my absolute favorite thing about Easter. Besides, it's right, it's in the beginning of the store. I always get an Easter basket, always have, always will. It's the best thing about this day. Okay, number two is candy. Okay, that can be number two, but what is the reason for Easter? The whole reason reason we even get to experience any of this, of the other nine things on the list. Number one has to be Jesus. I can't believe we almost forgot. <laughs> Miss Andrew, what is your top 10 reason Easter is your favorite holiday? Of course, Jesus. But that's not the norm these days. We are focused on candy and outfits and Easter egg hunts. We sometimes forget we really celebrated in the first place. Jesus literally gave us his life on the cross. This is the day to remember that. Be grateful for that. Thank him for that. We really should be every day, but today helps us to remind us that even in all of the business, he died for us. Forget the nine. This is what I want to celebrate today. And he is why this day matters more to me than any other holiday. So class, so class, this morning, Pastor House is going to join us and he's going to enlighten us on the resurrection. Let's give him a hand. Well, it's hard to follow great teaching like that. <laughs> Can we celebrate our amazing teacher, Sister Angela? Amen. And class, good morning. Um, what an amazing inspiration it has been to already share the top 10 reasons. Um, and I wanted to join y'all in Sunday school this morning um, just to reflect on the same old story. Reflect on the same old story. Um, my family, just like yours, joins on Easter typically, and um, we look forward to an amazing meal um, filled with um, all types of good proteins, um, lamb, ribs, amen, somebody, <laughs> for the, that's, that's for the um, soulful, um, but for the real, we, we, we go um, down south and we have uh, pig feet, <laughs> right, potato salad mac and cheese, collard greens, beans, greens, potatoes, <laughs> you name it. Um, but we, we enjoy it. And when we gather, um, I don't know if y'all have any um, aunts, uncles, or family and friends that love sharing that same story. Um, the story that, you know, you can usually finish when they start it, um, and they always tell you the same story like it's the first time. <laughs> Similar to today, right? To, to resurrection, to, to Easter, as the world calls it, but similar to Resurrection Sunday. It is the same old story, but it still has power. It still has power, right? Um, and... You know, I hope y'all follow with me, right? Um, with this same old story, there is inspiration. With this same old story, there is revelation. And it does have the power to speak to the young and the old. It's, in, it's inclusive, right? It does not, you know, pick one person and, and offer power to one person, but it, it is powerful to everybody. 
I'm thankful for that, right? That same old story. I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, you've you shared amazing top ten reasons. I wanted to kind of show you a verse in the Bible. Is that all right? And, I'm a, and I think we have some listening ears. I'm gonna share it with them too. Is that all right? It's um it's found in the book of Acts. It's um Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17 and one verse it's it's found again in the 17th chapter of Acts one verse and I want to share um, class from the New International Version um, we talk, we've talked about this before but I would encourage you to read multiple um, translations of the Bible not just the King James Right, but the NIV New International Version is one that speaks to me, um, and I can use it corporately when I'm talking to a group. But a very helpful translation I use when I'm by myself is the message. Everybody say the message. The message keeps it real, right? It, it speaks like we speak every day. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't speak in a poetic, poetic language. It, um, it kind of talks how y'all talk to each other, right? Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Do, listen, in Sunday school, y'all, um, I remember um, my Sunday school classes at Hungry Road Baptist Church. Do y'all get snacks in, in um, Sunday school? Seriously, y'all get snacks? Like, y'all get snacks? Good snacks? I'm going to come check on y'all class next Sunday, and I'm going to have a snack with y'all. But Acts chapter 17, um, verse 32, says this, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. That's it. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> in the presence of God, right? Um, now, when we think about that old story and this specific verse that um, we lifted up, I, I like to suggest um, to our class um, and to those that are peeping in. We got some nosy folk up in here today, right? So that's all right, too. We, we, like, we like nosy folk, right? Because what, however, watch this, however the message is brought forth, we thank God that the word is heard. Even in, with, with lip, listening ears and, and bystanders and uh, we, we call them um, lurkers, right? Even with lurkers, those that are being nosy, thank God for the word that is being shared. Uh, and I'm thankful for this expression of that and example today um, that is given. Um, as I think about this verse, um, there's a, a couple of things that comes to mind, and these are just observations, if that's all right to share, right? Observations of it. Um, with the observation of the relevance of the old story, there are three different responses. Say three. Say it like you mean it, like you had a snack. Three. All right? Now, I could, I could go um, and give several examples that, of the power of three. There's, there's meanings of three. Um, and I could tell you from a um, physical, fleshly perspective, or I can tell you from a spiritual, right? So uh, let's, let's go to contemporary cultural expression. Yeah, yeah, many who know me know why I love three. All right, so it's not three Super Bowls either. It's times two, right? Three times two is significant. See? Uncle Purcell got that right quick, right? But there, there is power in three in our culture and every day, but there's also power of three in the Word of God, right? The significance of three. And with the significance of three, um, I love how three work together when in unison, right? Now, I, I do want to tell you this, that... Um, it does not mean the three always work hand in hand at the same time, but thank God all things work together, 
I'll say that, right? So there may be in the significance of three, and you could, if you, whether you look at it from a practical sense or a spiritual sense, um, there are, there are threes always looking out for you. Um, from a cultural sense, um, know of your three responsibilities. Y'all ready for it? In school, wherever you are, even if you think nobody are looking, is looking, right? It's kind of three responsibilities culturally, right? Um, I'm going to ask y'all to repeat it, so maybe our listeners, they might join with you, right? First one. Say first one. First one is to look to God. All right, that's good. That's the first one. All right. Second one is to represent your family. All right. And the third one, and I, I want y'all to embrace this, it is to embrace your gift. <laughs> Culturally, right? Embrace your gift. You know, you, you, are, you are special. You are special. And, and I pray that whoever you're connected to, whoever you talk to, whoever you surround yourself with, they tell you that, right? I never want you all to ever question how special you are. You are special, right? Oh, and, and here's the good news of it. You, you are special every day, not just on Easter. You're important, right? So you, and I, I want you to feel included every Sunday, every day. Y'all hear that? Y'all ain't hearing me. All right, that's culturally. Now, spiritually or biblically from this text that we've, we've read, and when you think about the relevance of the same old story, or today, for example, the relevance of the resurrection, there are three responses to the gospel. Y'all ready for it? Everybody say three responses to the gospel. The gospel. You know what the gospel is? gospel is good news. Good news. Good news. Right? I'll, like, people love sharing bad news. P. Diddy. <laughs> Cancel culture. Bad news. But if you believe, you should love sharing good news. You should love hearing it. You, shouldn't, you should not feel uncomfortable with good news. That's, that's, that's where the enemy and the devil, who is real, right? The enemy and the devil seeps in to make us, make us feel uncomfortable with the good news. That's how, that's how good the enemy is. The enemy is just as good as us. Works just as hard. Seeps in, creeps in, right? Whispers in your ear. Whispers around your situation. At the right time in the right place. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. But... Good news still works. Good news speaks to our imperfections. Because we are human, we are not perfect. Say, I'm not perfect. That's for the parents, too. The, the, the harsh ones. The, the, the ones who don't spare the rod ones. The strict ones, the real strict ones, the ones that are so strict they shelter their gifts from flourishing. Y'all know those type of parents? The, the ones that children are, are so excited to get away from. Don't box in your gift. That's the beauty of that's the beauty of the resurrection. 
the resurrection shows us that the good news can't be boxed in. I could shout right there. The resurrection shows us that the good news can't be boxed in. I'm getting a sign right here. We're getting yawns. It's time to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the realness of the good news, the truth shall set you free. That's one of the responses of the good news. Check out the text, right? With the responses of the good news, there are three. And here's the first one. Some will mock the good news. Say some mocked. What is mocked? What does mock mean, right? Mocked can also be described as making fun of, right? But um, I like the interpretation of mock, which is um, parallel to what the gospel says, right, in Acts, and specifically in this verse, is that when it comes to our response to the good news, some fake it. Some pretend. Now, I'm, I'm saying to y'all, right, in your response to the good news, in your response to your amazing teacher, don't show up to class and fake it. To the nosy ones, don't show up to church and fake it. That's a word. Don't fake it. None of us are perfect. Show up with, with, with who you are. Show up with the, watch this, the fruits of where you've been. And don't be ashamed of it. That's the power of the good news. Because the power of the good news accepts you for who you are. So don't, listen, class, do not worry about uh, people who mock you, make fun of you because of the gift that you are. And sometimes your differences will separate you from the norm. It will push you to higher heights, but also it will push you to places where you feel that you are all alone. Where people that you think are your friends, those that you have poured into, those that you have shared life moments with, may be nowhere in sight when it gets tough. Keep trusting God. Keep trusting in the good news. Some will mock, right? That's, that's the first response. But the second response, which is found in this, this verse, is that some delay deciding. Some mock, some make fun of, some fake it till they make it or don't. Some pretend. Listen, I, 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 feel, I feel the push of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you pretending? I hope you caught it. Ain't no time for pretenders in 2024. What's your fake self? No time. But there are some who respond, some who delay deciding. These are the, these are the folks that hang out on the fence, right? Some, some folk love to play both sides. They are the ones when you are playing cards, perhaps. I'm talking to the real folk. They are the ones when you see out in public that love to live in blurred lines. They, they love to share uh, from uh, a, a, a lens of it could be and perhaps. Y'all know people who always respond with half answers? Could be, could be not. Yeah, that's right, on both sides. Some delay decisions, even to the good news. 
And this text shares with us plainly that some postpone and some put off their decision to receiving the good news. Their response was, we will hear you again on this matter. Do we show up to church really with that perspective in mind that somebody else may get excited about the good news? Somebody else may get excited about the gospel, but you're saying, I don't believe yet. Let me, let me show up next week and, and, and hopefully within seven days, something will make sense. The gospel will resonate in my life and maybe next week I'll believe. Perhaps that's why our worship experiences are the way they are. Because some people haven't made a decision yet. Leave it there. Second response, finally, as um, we bring this Sunday school class to a hold and to an end, right? Until next week. <laughs> we'll see you real soon, right? The third response finally shares with us that some do believe. Yeah. 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 Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm a believer. The NIV, which is what class? The new international, I'm coming back next week, I'm going to ask you the same thing. The NIV is the new international version, right? Which reads, a few men become followers of Paul and believe. The Bible says, Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. Here it is. Family and friends, Sunday school class. The resurrection story provides assurance of Christianity's promise through Jesus Christ. Here it is. Delete this, this experience. Delete this Sunday. I'm going to say it again. Delete the Resurrection Sunday, and we are not telling the whole story. Nudge your neighbor one last time and say, neighbor, tell the whole story. That is, tell it like it is. Right? I'm thankful that the resurrection is the cornerstone to our faith. God provides proof of the power of the gospel. Watch this. By the resurrection. Because of the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Really said resurrection Sunday. Because of the empty tomb, the gospel now provides power to our testimonies. Y'all ain't hear me. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to end this class. I promise you I am. Because of the empty tomb, our testimonies are filled. Because of the empty tomb, our testimonies are filled with joy. Because of the empty tomb, our testimonies are filled, amen, with uplift because of the empty tomb. Our testimonies are filled with peace because of the empty tomb. Our testimonies have power. Nudge your neighbor and say, there's power. Yeah, Chucky felt that one. Because of the empty tomb of the gospel, our testimonies are filled with the power of God. Many of our children believe that the central issue of first century preaching was baptism. But the central issue was the resurrection. 
And as we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday and this Resurrection class, the relevance of the resurrection is found in 1 Corinthians 15 that says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach, which you received and on which you believe you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word that I preach to you, otherwise you believed in vain. The resurrection of Christ is the greatest proof of God's power. Y'all heard the choir singing, there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb. It is proof that Jesus is the son of God. Y'all help me close this class. There is power. Say it again. There is power. And this power provides proof that there is nothing too hard for God. Say it again. There is power. There is power that the relevance of the same old story still works today in 2024. Nudge your neighbor one more time and say there is power. Power that that the eternal light and spirit still lives through us. There is power. That love still lives on through you and me. There is power. That no matter what we face in this life, if we remember the same old story, we can tell anybody, we can encourage ourselves that God is able. Yeah, said there is power. Where do we get this power from? Can I tell you an old story? Yeah, there's an old story that say they hung Jesus on a cross. Y'all have heard it before. They say they hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head for me and you. He died. Yeah, all week we've been keeping him on the cross. All week we've been saying to be continued. All week we've been talking about who has hung out around the cross. Uh, but I thank God, I thank God that I can finally release my whole story testimony. And I can tell you on this Sunday that that's not how. The story ends. Yeah, three. There it is again. There's power in three. And there's power in three. I'm going to say it one more time. There's power in three. Because I know the whole story tells me and you that three days later, the same person that was hung on a cross three days later, the same person that was put in a borrowed tomb, the same person that remained silent all day Saturday. I've been waiting for this thing all week long. Oh, but early. Yeah, somebody say early. Early one Sunday morning, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ got up with all power, all power in his hands. Yeah, nudge your neighbor and say, there is power. There's power in the wonder working, 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 precious blood of Jesus. There is power. Power in the testimony that every day I get up, uh, my God, my gospel story lets me know that it ain't over until God says it's over. The power of the gospel story lets me know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There is power that allows me, amen, to walk right. There is power that allows me to talk right. There is power that I can say to anybody, won't he do it? Yeah, won't he do it? Yeah, won't he do it? 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 Won't he not fight your battle? Won't he not heal your body? Won't he not make ways out of no way? Won't he not open doors for you? If you know the power that still works in 2024, say yeah. Okay. Say yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. When I think of the wonder-working power of the gospel, I don't care if it's Easter Sunday. I can't help 
but to celebrate his goodness. I can't help but to give him glory. Come on, class, give him glory for me right now. Give God praise for what he's done. He lives. He lives. He lives. Christ lives today. Come on, how do I know? Because the tomb's empty. How do I know? Because it woke me up this morning. How do I know? Because it keeps on showing up over and over and over again. How do I know there is power? Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Yeah. 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 Because he's good. Yeah. Because he's made ways. And I celebrate today that he still lives. He lives in my soul. Come on, let's give him praise right now for the relevance of the same old story. There is power in today, church. Power in Resurrection Sunday. He died but he got up today, and he got up for you and I. So if you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a part of this branch of Zion, the church that loves to love God's people, you may come by baptism, you may come by letter or Christian experience. If you want to feel that power that the pastor just talked about, the power of love, the power of peace, the power of happiness. Now is the time to come. If you want to feel the power of walking in the light of life because he rose today, now is the time to come. So those that are here today or those that might be viewing us online, now is the time for you to come. Now is the time. Tomorrow might be too late, but today is right on time. So whatever your heart tells you to do, now is the time. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap this morning, church. We are all one big happy family. We are saved and walking in the presence of the Lord and being the example that he has taught us to be. It's been a good day. Amen. Amen. And now I will turn it over to our diaconate ministry, and they will come forth and lead us in our offering. stand let us stand together as our ushers lead us in worship amen you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try the more you give the more he gives back to you so let us pray to God in the spirit of worship together amen as we pray and prepare to give Lord receive our gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom in Jesus name amen Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. What he does in our lives you might not think you have strength but he pulls it out of you amen and the reason that he was able to do that in all that you seen today was because everyone shared their gifts that the pastor has talked about from the beginning to the end everyone was allowed to share their gifts and as we came together and as we practice and you know, we looked at each other and we said, this might work this way, this might work that way. And I said, Ms. Lambert, what do you think about this? I said, Reverend P, what, what else do you think? You know, we just all came together. Because what I see, they don't see. And what they see, I don't see. But when you all come together for the uplifting of God's kingdom, that's what it's all about. Amen? Amen. So I just like to uh, ask all of those that were a part of today's program to please stand and that include the parents and the grandparents and those that helped plan the program stand don't be shy because I just want to give you your honor thank you appreciate you coming out and give our you thank you and as you can see, we had them at all ages. Look at the little ones. Even they participated. So we just, I just like to uh, thank everyone. And I like to thank my pastor for uh, his guidance and always leading and direct me in, in the right direction. So I thank you for trusting me. And I thank the church for allowing me to, uh, to be present with you and to be a part of this great branch of Zion. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you and God loves you too. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. While we're giving thanks, can we celebrate all of our church family that is connected? Amen. That is in the building. Let's celebrate again our young people that have led us in worship. Thank God for those in leadership. Amen. Our worship leader, Reverend P. Amen, somebody. Let's celebrate our worship leader. God is good. Um, I'm excited uh, as I see faces. Amen. Beautiful faces. Smiling faces. Easter outfit having on folk. Amen. It's good to see you. Amen. Um, college students in the house. Amen. College students in the house. Amen. I see you. I see you. I, I don't know if you got a, a, a boo beside you, but somebody beside you. Amen. A family or friends. Amen. I'm going to call you out. Amen. Thank you for bringing him to church or her. Amen. If you thought I was talking about you, I am. Thank you for who you brought to church. It's good to be in church. Amen. Let me give you a secret. If you can't come to church with him, you may need to leave him alone. Um, I'm talking about um. I was telling on Friday night, um, um, um is for South Chesterfield. North Chesterfield don't know nothing about it. Um, M, M, E, M. I ain't, I ain't even saying the whole word. 
but thank God that you're in the house and we thank God for your presence. God is good. Amen. Um, I, I'm saying that also to say um, it's been a good day. Um, this week, I, I need y'all help. Last week, I thank y'all for your presence. Um, I'll be somewhere. Last week, we were somewhere too. All right, we'll be. I'll be at First Baptist Church of City Point in Hopewell in Revival from Tuesday, April 2nd to Thursday, April 4th. Amen. So I, I want to see uh, my family in the house. Amen. My church family in the house. I thank you for your support. Reverend Pete, thank you for your support. TBC Chesterfield, thank you for your support. On Friday night at Union Grove, we celebrated together. And on Friday afternoon, amen, Reverend Micah was in the house. We had some singing folk in the choir from my church family at 6 Mount Zion at 12 o'clock. God is good. So I thank you for all of your support. Um, but I need your support and your prayers. Amen. Because this week we'll be right back at it. The gospel train is rolling. Amen. Uh, so we thank God for the power and presence of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that is providing what we need when we need it. Amen. Um, Last but not least, um, today we're in for a special treat. No, let me say this one. We got to keep it real. Um, Pastor Bishop Jeffrey Reeves said this at Friday night at First African, and he's talking about this season, and this season and the relevance of the same old story, and the empty tomb reminds us that there's still work to be done. All right, so I don't, I don't want to miss this moment, right? And, and um, I'm saying this specifically, and I heard a sister preach a phenomenal message for the seven last words for our experience at, on Friday night at Union Grove, and she was talking about who was hanging out around the cross. She, she said, where the men's at? <laughs> right? And that's real. Look, I, I, we, we need you brothers. Brothers, we need you. Brothers, we need you in church. We need you in the, we don't just need you to help build something physically. We need your help building spiritually. We need your help building family. We need your help building community, all right? And I'm not talking about you that are retired. I'm talking about Q, we need you. I'm talking about RJ, we need, I need you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I need you. I need, I need you. I need you for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. And there's work to be done. Now, and I'm saying this specifically to all y'all, right? And I ain't saying it's going to be hard work. Because when you're doing what you love for the Lord, it is easy. Your labor is not in vain. So I ain't asking for a whole lot of time. I know you're busy. I know you got families. Hey Amen. I know you got work. I know you got school. But what I'm saying is I need y'all to start growing this church, this community. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And listen, we can't wait until next year. All right? Everything else is growing. Right? Restaurants are being built. Communities are being built. Roads are expanding, and I do not want the growth that is going on in Coburg to pass us by. We are no longer the church that's on the side of the road, country dirt road. We are in Chesterfield, Virginia. We celebrate the rich history of Winnipeg. Amen. But it's time for Winnipeg to blow up, to be a destination. And I need your help. All right. Let me just leave it at there. Speaking about food, y'all know I love faith, family, fellowship, and food. We're excited to, amen, have brunch today, amen. So you ain't got to rush to the restaurant. Our hospitality has prepared a phenomenal meal for you today. Let's give God praise for it. Let's give God praise. Y'all give God, I'm eating first, so I'm going to praise God right now, amen. Amen, some I ain't eating first, I love y'all. Here's the, here's the instruction, here's the instruction, right? Here's the instruction from the bottom of my heart. Um, directions from our hospitality. Please allow our seniors to exit first. Everybody say seniors first. All right, if, if you ain't got your AARP card, sit down, amen. Don't use your, your don't don't use your walking stick, amen, as an excuse. Amen. Don't start limping slow now. Seniors first. Seniors will be served first. We're asking seniors to be served first and exit first. You will have special seating. Amen. 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 
That's it. Serving is coming from the kitchen window. Amen. Come on, somebody. And it's a, and it's a whole lot of good food. Amen. So we celebrate that. Y'all receive the instruction? We're going to enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you for being here for your presence. And we're excited to continue to grow as a church family for the upbuilding of God's kingdom and show God's love. Amen. Show God's love. Show God's love. Let us stand to be dismissed as we provide the benediction and the blessing. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Owens back in the house. Amen. Today. Um, recovering from surgery. Amen. Walking. Walking by faith. So we thank God. For a presence. God is good. All right. We good? We good? You look good too, boy. You look good. You look good. Amen. 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 Let us, let us pray. Thank you, God, for the relevance of the same old story. But thank you that it brings new inspiration day by day as we walk by faith. Now, oh God, bless the food and the fellowship that we are about to witness as you have blessed our worship in the sanctuary bless our fellowship in the fellowship hall let it be used and god given for nourishment for uplift for peace joy long suffering in what we will face in the days to come but we thank you right now for the love that it took to prepare and now god we say we receive it with love God, now as we not only enjoy fellowship in this space, but as we enjoy fellowship throughout the day, God, keep us, bless us, and protect us as only you can. Continue to inspire and remind us that the good news of the gospel still works. And God, through our walk, through our faith, and through our testimonies, I pray that if it is a silent communication, that we will let the world know that you are still able. If it is through articulation, I pray that you give us the words to say and the actions, um, God, to present but most of all I pray that what is said and done is pleasing in your sight so now God as we leave from this sacred space but not from your presence to you God we give you thanks to you God we put our faith in your hands to you God we put our trust in what is unseen to you God we give you thanks in advance and we know because of an empty tomb that there is victory today and in days to come. We give you thanks, glory, and honor for what you've already done. We give you thanks, glory, and honor for what you have done in this moment. And we give you thanks, glory, and honor for what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say together, amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace. We love you. And God does too. Sing us first. Have an amazing Resurrection Sunday.